Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Smadar Steinberg, and together with David Kitron, my partner in editing and carrying out this series, we are happy to open the fifth lecture of Winnicottian Ideas in the Contemporary Clinic. This project is evolving and becoming a space in which Winnicott Center invites you to meet psychoanalysts that are faculty of the advanced program of psychoanalytic psychotherapy of Winnicott Center, as well as psychoanalysts from around the world. All are inspired by and think and work through the Winnicottian tradition. We are more than honored and happy to have with us again our good friend and senior psychoanalyst, head of the Winnicott Center in Rome, Italy, Professor Vincenzo Bonamino. We last met three years ago, I think, when yes. Professor Bonamino, yes, it was three years already, uh, when you were our guest and key speaker in the Winnicott Center Decade Conference, Kenesasso, Misha Zohoyer, which took place in Tel Aviv. Unfortunately, the Corona crisis both countries had suffered through separated us in body, but not in spirit. Professor Bonamino was one of our guest speakers in the series of July-August heat that took place last summer over Zoom with the participation of hundreds of professionals from the vast professional community in Israel. Actually, I feel that it's it is almost unnecessary to introduce Professor Bonamino, but it is, of course, my pleasure to do so, and I will do it now briefly. Professor Bonamino is a training and supervising analyst of the Italian Psychoanalytic Society in the IPA and in private psychoanalytic practice, adult and child in Rome. He's adjunct professor at La Sapienza University of Rome and honorary visiting professor at the Psychoanalysis Unit, University College of London. He has been the director of the Winnicott Institute training course in child and adolescent psychoanalytic psychotherapy for over 25 years and is currently the director of Winnicott Center Italia in Rome. He is a past vice president of the EPF, a European Psychoanalytic Federation, and the chair of the program committee, as well as a member of the European Editorial Board of the International Journal of Psychoanalysis. Professor Bonamino co-edits Richard A. Pigel, an Italian four-monthly journal of psychoanalytic study of the child and adolescent, and Psychoanalysis Contemporanea, a psychoanalytic book series. I hope I pronounced it as it should be. He was awarded uh, the fifth International Francis Testing Memorial Prize and Lecture in Los Angeles, 201, and was the main lecturer of the 208th Francis Testing Trust and Prize. His publications, mostly in Italian and English, include 130 papers, 130 papers, and co-authored and edited books, and he presented papers and contributions in national and international psychoanalytic conferences. Today, we have the special honor of celebrating with Professor Bonamino the publication of his new book. Congratulations. Thank you. The book is entitled Playing at Work, Clinical Essays in a Contemporary Winnicottian Perspective on the Clinic. In fact, the lecture that we will soon hear is based on the first chapter of this book. In the introduction uh, to his book, Bonamino wonders about the fact that his most recent paper which chronologically should have been located in the end of the book, found itself located as the first chapter, a reversal that indicates 
that seeds of his later thought have been already sown in his earlier writings. This reversal contains in itself something of the essence of surprise, temporality, and the unknown. All characterize those psychic phenomena that Bonamino will soon share with us in his own very lively and very creative way. Bonamino introduced us to the book by declaring, this is not a book on Winnicott. <laughs> Doesn't this surprising statement capture the full essence of the Winnicottian tradition that Bonamino, I feel, fully embraces in his own personality? In his writings, Bonamino shares with us his own clinical challenges, his unique journeys with his patients, and his unique presence as a psychoanalyst. Still, he writes, I have learned from Winnicott, I'm, I'm quoting, I have learned from Winnicott many things, primary among them to value the power of transitional space when with my patients. I have learned how to loiter and to slash whatever is necessary to stay a few, step, a few steps behind rather than to march out in front of the analysand leading the way. I have become comfortable with my role as the supreme dupe, the one who doesn't know much at all. On a good day, I am the one in the corner wearing the dancer's cap. And what has my embracing this stance yielded? Like a person who thinks he's taking the train to Milano only to discover he is seated on a train to Napoli. I find myself deeply surprised. I suggest that we now take the train that uh, is this lecture and allow ourselves to go wherever it may lead us. Transference before transference. Professor Bonamino, I pass the microphone to you. Thank you very, very much for this moving presentation, maybe more than I deserve. Anyway, it's very precise, and uh, I am very moved by the fact that you mentioned that this is my book, forthcoming book, is not on Winnicott, but I wanted uh, um, intentionally not to uh, mention the theory of Winnicott, if not at a minimum part, but express my own clinical experience, because as I say in many parts of the book, I love Winnicott, maybe too much, because Winnicott talks to my soul. And when I see patient, I remember what I have read on Winnicott, by, from Winnicott. Not, for example, the same with Bion, who is a great psychoanalyst, but I don't feel this, the, the same sense of uh, conviviality, of accordance. That's why I wanted to um, disentangle this uh, tradition of uh, presenting uh, uh, Winnicott ideas and poor clinical example. I made exactly the contrary, poor clinical ideas that everyone knows, except those that uh, for me are not well um, understood, and many clinical examples that show not the way in Winnicott work, but the way in which, in which I work according to my vision of Winnicott. So this book, this paper, and I'm very happy that uh, Shmadar, with I, together with uh, his, her husband, uh, am very grateful too, 
Uh, I'm very happy that uh, she show, cho chose this paper because uh, uh, when I was uh, constructing the book, uh, I will short, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, okay. um, at, the, uh, at the end of the constructing of the book, I realized that the first uh, paper that was the last that I wrote uh, resumed all my vision on Winnicott and uh, provocatively because it is as you will see a paper that uh, uh, is full of enactment full of counter transference uh, uh, feelings that I think for the first time are so openly um, expressed I thought that uh, this is the good paper for presenting myself. The other paper are on the same line, but less strong. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, let me say that I have constructed this paper like a movie, scene one, uh, then, um, and you will see, then uh, a brief part of uh, uh, theoretical comment on uh, the concept of the counter transfer that uh, precedes the transference and at the end some comments on the um, uh, on on the patient that is uh, the the core of the paper let's start okay on i will try to, to share was, i will try to share a screen uh, just a minute sorry I will try to share screen, but I don't know how to do it. Just a minute. What do I have to do? Okay. Oh, what a wonderful. Here is, can you see the, the okay, text okay. on I the screen? It. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay. Scene one, Paula, a Tuesday in March, not long after, uh, 6 30 p.m. some years ago paula arrives on time uh, as usual it is the first session of the week she is 30 years 38 years old and an only daughter and has an elder brother she has recently separated on a trial basis from her boyfriend with whom she had a son who is now a year and a half old. The child is mostly cared for by the parents who retired early for this job. She is a teacher in a middle school. Paula begins to speak softly of the most important thing that happened to her and bought her head over the weekend. She is very typical of her mm, initial uh, session. Mm. Uh, e, a child, Luca, with whom she could finally spend some time, she is also feel like an inadequate, immature mother, moved into the background for the first time because in the previous session, Luca was at the center of her discourse. It was though it didn't exist, she said. I behaved like I was in a trance and only now and then was a little bit there with Luca, she means. She told me she had felt great discomfort in, um, sorry, um, uh, 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 she, she told me she uh, great this I lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I was uh, just a minute. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Great discomfort. Okay, can you go uh, just a little bit discomfort because uh, she and uh, I can uh, remember what I want to say. She and uh, is actual uh, um, present boyfriend who is a professor of gymnastic in the same school where um, 
uh, the, by the, um, the principal, and uh, the principal said, uh, you know, there is uh, the uh, um, campo scuola, school camp that in, in Italy, it is a week during uh, some, during uh, spring or, um, or uh, winter, and she, the, 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 um, the president, the, the principal said, I thought that uh, the, the good person for this job would be Luigi, the professor of gymnastic. But you know, in this time, uh, with all this uh, molestation to the girls, I had chosen uh, Paola. And Luigi looked at her in a very um, hateful way because he wanted to go to, uh, to the school camp. And he thought justly that he was the more uh, suitable person for this. But uh, the, the president, the, the, the principal was uh, um, uh, absolutely um, firm in his idea because of the reason I told before. And uh, when Paola uh, narrates me this, she says that uh, uh, Luca, uh, sorry, Luigi, uh, look at her in a very hateful way, and they went away without talking to each other. And she felt very guilty because uh, of this, but in the same time, very happy because for the first time, he could have a week free of the parents, free of Luigi, free of Luca. And she was absolutely obsessed by the control of the parents on the child, by the control of Luca, who, who was, uh, um, how can I say in English, very physical, very um, uh, good food, not, not smoking, uh, very, very uh, healthy. And she was a smoker, uh, was a, a woman who wanted to uh, have fun. So she was very, very happy of this cho choose of the president, of the uh, principal, but at the same time, very, very guilty because of the choice of the uh, president of the principal, but she didn't reply anything. She did not uh, say, but maybe Luigi, who was uh, pressing her with the glance, uh, is better than me. She remained silent and Luigi was furious. And she told me, I feel very guilty, I must confess, but uh, I am dreaming a week without Luca, without my parents, and without with a break, a ball breaker of <laughs> Luigi, who uh, impede me to smoke, and I cannot do anything. anything. When she was telling uh, Smadal, tell me if I am going too long, but uh, the first part is important to express, when uh, um, she was uh, mm, narrating this uh, in a very agitated way, at a certain point, I, we heard um, the intercom of the main uh, entrance of my building ringing. And uh, there is something uh, ringing. And I said in a very... <laughs> very uh, easy way, don't worry, it, it, it is not for us. I was sure it was not for us. And she said, after the second uh, ringing, but he, this person is ringing. And I said, with the tone a little bit uh, irritated, but not uh, very irritated, maybe it is 
for my colleague, but I was sure it was not for my colleague, which is my wife, by the way, because we organized the things that I start um, session at uh, 30 and she starts session at the hour. So there is no possibility unless for range reason that our patient meet it at other. So I continue. Continue, I, I said, you, you go on, but the ringing continued. And at a certain point I said, do, do not care of, of this. Let him or her ring. Someone mm, will uh, uh, open, but the ringing continued. So my counter transfer became like a, a fire. I was furious, but uh, trying to contain my, uh, my rage. And I said, let's say, don't worry, but with a very, very um, high voice. And she said, maybe you are um, a little bit uh, upset. Why don't you go? I am an old patient. This is not uh, bad for me. And they said, don't worry, it is not our problem. But because this uh, person co continued to ring, I contradicting myself said, sorry, I have to go because otherwise we can, uh, cannot have the session. So you can see very well how this session, we start with a, a normal narration became a sequence of enactment. So I said, sorry, I have to go, otherwise we cannot go on. I went to the um, um, intercom and said, uh, yes, we, we, with a very controlled voice, but uh, very openly irritated. And uh, he said on, um, on the other side, I am, uh, uh, Marco, I don't remember the name, Stampeder, which is the translation in English of a very typical name that means uh, like uh, boots that uh, 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 or, or, or across uh, I am Professor Buramino, but the appointment is tomorrow, Wednesday, not today. So I discovered that I became very, very um, uh, controlled, but uh, my emotion filtered <laughs> over me. And uh, I realized that I became very obsessive. Wednesday, not Tuesday, Wednesday, 6.30. And the patient, of course, was li lying on the, uh, on the coach. And she, of course, realized that I was very irritated. When I sat back again, she said, Professor Buramino, it's very clear that you are irritated. Why don't you open and let this man uh, or this person uh, come up and so you can see. Now I am an old patient and I don't care about this interruption of our session. I said, no, no, I don't want. Let's continue. But my counter transference, and this is the second part of the paper, was very, very intense, very furious, and uh, mm, very, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, very difficulty, with difficulty, I was able to control my counter transfer. So a lot of thinking, 
that I can uh, describe as uh, uh, of a free overing association of the analyst, but I think that this is the first time or one of the first time in which the analyst openly, as uh, Bollas and Gabbard have noticed in their introduction in my book, openly express his uh, uh, sentiments, his feelings of counter transfer. I said, what the hell? The, the the janitor is ringing because I thought that he was the janitor and I told him, I had told him, don't ring while I am in session. Then I thought maybe it's the priest because I realized that it was uh, around uh, Easter and uh, said that creep, sorry, of, of, of priest. He does not understand that I am not religious. I am not religious. So what does he want from me? I won't open. And these were my mm, thinking. Then I was furious toward my wife because maybe was a, a, a late patient of my wife. And I, I asked myself, why does not she go and open. At the end, I came again to the um, intercom and said, uh, Mr. St. Peter, remember the session we have uh, is tomorrow 6.30 at, um, on Wednesday. But while I was saying this, uh, I realized that he was uh, going away and uh, once uh, on the mm, chair again, the uh, Paola said, Poverino, poor man, he is going away like uh, a mm, beaten wolf. And this is very interesting because the Italian expression is a beaten dog. And he said, beaten wolf. So he catch something that I then discovered in the analysis with St. Peter, but uh, maybe one year later that he was a, a very aggressive man and I have no time to describe how aggressive he was. Then I restarted, uh, this is the second part of the second part, my attitude, but I was very confused, very bewildered and said, maybe, and this is very important, the first time that I made an interpretation on siblings, because I told her, uh, maybe you feel that this man is like your brother and you have uh, stolen the place to your brother. And she replied, how strange I am, because uh, I know that this is my hour. I have not stolen nothing to anyone, but I feel guilty. And so I introduced uh, an Oedipal, uh, very organized interpretation of sibling rivalry. I am expressing this because, of course, I cannot say now, in the further analysis with St. Peter, all these elements became in front, became in the forefront, and he had a very conflictual uh, relationship with her sister, also, um, a sort of incest with her because they were very uh, close in age and uh, he was very guilty. And be because uh, before telling me this, uh, many times uh, passed by. So what I want to stress is this, is this uh, why the, tra the counter transference precedes transferring because I introduced for the first time 
two elements that I want you mm, mm, notice, but maybe we can discuss this. First, the Oedipal interpretation on, Ed, uh, on sibling, and never before I had made this interpretation. So I asked myself why I am introducing the brother that never appeared in her um, narration. And second, the confusion between beaten dog and beaten wolf. And in reality, uh, uh, St. Peter was like a wolf when I um, initiated the analysis with him. So the reason why I think that uh, in this case, this enactment was very, very um, meaningful is that the two elements, two apparently not important element brought me to think that something had to do not only with Paola, but also with uh, Stampeder. And the, the further analysis with Stampeder demonstrated that he had a very strong conflictual link with the parents, not Paola, with the sister, with whom she, he had, they had a sort of quasi incestual relationship, and uh, he was furious with his parents, furious with me, and I can uh, introduce, add, it is not in the paper, that once he went many years after, in the session, in the period in which Berlusconi was uh, trying to, uh, to gather people for his party, and uh, through the father, he obtained to go to the place where Berlusconi made the interview to people. And he said, my father told me that uh, I, can go, but I have no uh, tie, no jacket. Can I go this way? And I said, but I don't think that he, it is a must to go to Berlusconi with uh, a jacket and a tie. You can go as you are, you are perfect. And he was furious with me and sitting on the coach, said, I know that you are, as all the analysts, a dirty communist. And um, uh, jumping up, he took, no, he, he, he sorry, he, he took something from his uh, uh, portfolio uh, wallet and uh, uh, um, throw against me the uh, uh, the wallet and who of course uh, uh, dispersed around all the uh, poor money that he had in the in the wallet and the poor, uh, the wallet went after an old radio of my childhood I was very, very um, affectionate to it. And he, he was a very strong man, pull this radio, pick up the, uh, the wallet, and um, again uh, made the radio in, in, the, in the place. And I thought that he was completely ruined. When, and he went away. And I was completely terrorized of what he had done. And Paula said, poor man, he is very, very, coming back to the, the session, he is very, very um, uh, alone. Maybe he should marry, deserve more attention from you. So I was furious because uh, Paula was 
trying to tell me how to do with him. And, but I was furious with him and with Paola. And um, she co continued to say, I cannot bear the sense of guilt, even though I know that it is my session. And uh, uh, I think that this is, this is the most important part of, 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 the, of the paper. If you want, we can continue. Maybe if Madari is uh, agree, we can uh, introduce the discussion. The first point is uh, the role of enactment in analysis. And it is an important uh, problem now, uh, become an important problem now. And the second is my conception, which is not only mine, many others speak that uh, uh, analysis uh, transference uh, uh, precede, uh, counter transfer precede transference and organize the way in which uh, the patient uh, relate transferentially to the analyst. But is, this is a very important problem to discuss. Not everyone would be in agreement with this. So I propose to discuss these first two points and then to go on. I don't know what do you think, uh, Zmadar. Uh, there is still time. I think it's a good idea that maybe you you, you discuss those points. I think the, the concept of your unique concept, the, the transference before transference is very unique. Maybe you can uh, explain it more for the audience. And after that, we will see uh, if the audience have some questions uh, and we can continue. Of, uh, you are right. Of course, any analyst uh, <laughs> believes that uh, it is uh, his own discover. And I had the same impression. Then I read the round and I discovered that uh, not many, but some analysts, uh, for example, Racker, says that uh, counter transfer precedes transference. And uh, in his famous book, uh, Racker is uh, an Argentinian very important analyst uh, entitled Transfer and Counter Transference. He discussed the relationship, uh, the entanglement between transfer and counter transference. Now, why I decide to precede this uh, paper to all the other? Because uh, while I was reviewing all the papers that I collected in the book, I discovered that in many other papers, I implied this, that counter transfer, even though I didn't say overtly, I discovered that counter transference precedes transfer. For example, you receive a phone call. I remember very clearly one of the, my, my first patient, and uh, she said in a very strong, uh, volative, uh, how can I say, voice, uh, are you Dr. Bonaminio? Uh, I have been um, sent by you by Dr. B, and I want to start an analysis. My idea of this woman was of a strong, very, um, how can I say, very, uh, very volatile woman. When I opened the door, I discovered a small woman with a soft voice, very timid. And so I had a difficulty to reconcile my first idea on the phone call with the relationship that we established then they then she become very strong but at the beginning i thought to open the door to a very strong woman very tall and she was very very timid are you dr bramenio and so this is just an example in another case another patient came and said 
I have uh, a lot of difficulty in um, concluding my uh, university training because I cannot do the graduation thesis. And you, who are very famous, of course, it was in an idealization of me, you can help me to conclude my thesis. And I discovered that this is, this was a way of seducing me in the counter transference. And I made a lot of effort to reestablish the normal um, two way relationship of transference and counter transference. And I can quote many other examples, but I don't want to be boring you. So I think that uh, at the end of my book, I discovered that I think you cannot uh, be in agreement that uh, something of the first con contact of the patient with the analyst structure the transference of the patient. Then, of course, the ability of the analyst is to reestablish the things and establish from one side the transfer and from the other side the counter transfer. But at the beginning, the first reaction is uh, that of the patient. Can I add another example? Very interesting. A, 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 a female patient, uh, then I discovered that she was a psychologist, called me and said, are you Dr. Bomio? And I said, no, my name is Bonaminio. Don't worry, it's not important. Are you Dr. Bomio? And I repeat, no, I am Dr. Bonaminio. And said, I want to ask if you are um, available for analysis because I had many contact with other analysts and he mentioned completely uh, distorting the surname of this analyst, like with me. For example, one uh, was uh, Magnaggi uh, and Magnaggi, he, he, he called him. Another was, I don't remember the name, he distorted all the name. And I had the idea, the first idea that remained for a long time, that he had not a precise representation, internal representation of the object. And this was confirmed because at a certain point, she said, but Bonaminio, I remember that I had my um, Pirocinio, I don't know how to say, my practice be before becoming psychologist in a school when my mother was a professor in that school. And I remember the tragedy that happened because uh, Professor Bonaminio, my mother, died suddenly. The day in which uh, they were um, celebrating his re her retirement. So for the first time, she entered inside me and for the first time, I understood because he had to change my name because he can, could not, uh, how can I say, mm, make a precise uh, limit of, of the person. And all in that occasion, she said, Professor Bonamino, and for the first time, she said, you should have suffered a lot because your mother died the day of the retirement. And in, in, in reality, it was a tragedy because my first son, Angelo, was at eight months of pregnancy. So our first son birth was, how can I say, uh, uh, biased, uh, invaded by the, the, the mourning for the death 
unexpected of my mother, who was uh, a very healthy woman, and uh, she died for uh, uh, a brain stroke suddenly, without any. Um, she was completely healthy, and she remembered this and said, "Now I remember." And so your name is Bonaminio, like that of your mother. And that was the first time that she told Bonaminio rightly. So, oh, not only these uh, poor examples, but many others brought me to understand that uh, the first impression is that of the counter -transit. I am not alone. For example, Ted Jacobs, that uh, has written a beautiful uh, blurbs uh, for my book, uh, says uh, the same thing that maybe sometimes counter transfer precede transference. So I am not alone. But uh, I think that uh, <laughs> it is important for me because this discovered. I made by myself before reading these books, these other papers by authors. And of course, for me, the most important reading was Eight Encounter Transfers by Winnicott, which I would suggest you to read. And if you want, and if it will happen, I. <laughs> If I will be invited again, I can give a lecture on eight encounter transference. Winnicott in eight encounter transference says of the objective counter transference, which is not of the projection of the patient inside the analyst, like the client says, but is an inner sentiment feeling of the analyst against the patient. And she he says that this negative attitude of the analyst has to be taken into consideration, put apart, and put at disposition, at disposal of the patient if it is the case. So Winnicott in 1947 was one of the first to say that the counter transfer can precede Transference. I don't know. I, I have to stop here because I can go on if you don't stop me. No, you, you, you can go, go on some minutes before we open uh, for. Uh, but I, uh, with your permission, I can uh, take out the text, right? Sorry, I, I didn't understand well. Can you? You can um, you can go on, please, for for. We, 10 we, minutes we more and the then text, eh? with that, you have to you don't need the text anymore yes but i, I cannot uh, scroll it uh, can you do it for yes. me ah you you want the text if you want no 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 i think it's okay i want to see if somebody is written okay um May I say something, Vincenzo? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, yes, I think that uh, one of the most interesting uh, issues that you that you mention is that uh, actually also the the analyst, but also the maybe also the the patient who before he even meets the analyst. Uh, are invaded in a way with uh, some unrepresented materials, unknown materials uh, that influence the way, for example, that the analyst is welcoming a specific patient. It is like uh, and not, uh, I, not an empty place. Very do agree with you. Also, because this case is interesting, because my counter transfer is very open, and yes. I don't think I don't want to be presentous, but not so many analysts open up their 
contact transference uh, toward the patient, only perhaps, uh, not only him, but uh, um, I don't remember now the name, the one who wrote about schizophrenia, he says uh, all, all, all overtly what he feels against the patient. Mm, I don't remember now the name. So I don't want to say that I am the only one. The important for me is that I discovered this by myself. Then I was comforted in reading that some other analyst thinks the same. Not, not all the analysts, but some other analyst thinks the same. I am very convinced that uh, the first contact with the patient is uh, an organizing of the transference of the patient from the by the analyst. Then the uh, smartness of the analyst is to reestablish the uh, normal flux between transference and counter-transfer. You cannot remain with the idea that your counter-transfer is uh, the only way of understanding the patient. Otherwise, you are delusional. Okay. No? But the first impression is to be elaborated, and then you have to make space for the patient transference. And the patient transference, vice versa, transform the analyst counter-transference. So at the beginning, the situation is very complex. Then the analyst has to reestablish the, the, mm, the classical situation. I don't know if I am clear in this. Um, maybe you can explain it more. Please. I mean that the first impression organize the way in which the patient relates to you because you reply, yes, I am Dr. Bonamino. Yes, please come. And the patient can uh, feel accepted or if you are in, uh, in, 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 uh, in fight with your wife that day, you can be very distant and the patient feel your feelings, even though you cannot express overtly but, but you know it is it's, 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 sorry it is interesting to see there is a lot of unsaid in the relationship between the patient and the analyst that um, uh, as the analysis go on goes on the analyst should be able to transform in something that could be said and uh, in this case, it is important that uh, the analysts uh, don't remain linked to the first impression, but in, in a Winnicottian way, leave space, uh, transitional space uh, to the patient so that the patient can uh, bring his own ideas. For example, I can uh, bring uh, I don't know if this helped me to explain better. I had a supervision with Bolas, we, who came for many times uh, as visiting professor in our uh, institute, Winnicott Institute. And uh, I had uh, mm, something like 15, 20 supervision with a very difficult patient I didn't understand at the beginning that he was very narcissistic because he, he went, he came to me for ejaculation, ejaculation, precox ejaculation. So I focused on this. And so we had the supervision and this patient was very talkative. And I replied, make some interpretation, some not, and, but I have to say something about this later. And at a certain point, let's say at the seventh, eighth session, 
he remained completely silent for five, six minutes. I was waiting because I was uh, uh, in supervision with Andreas Janagulas, recently died, and it is a very big uh, morning for me because he, he was my mentor, my teacher, my father, my brother, my all. And uh, I was, uh, uh, mm, uh, how can I say, uh, a bit well, I, had, I had the habit to wait the patient without intervening. But after mm -hmm. five minutes with a very talkative patient, I said in English, but at that time, my English was not so bad, <laughs> bad as it is now. It, it was worse. And I, I told him, Ernesto, why this silence today in a very investigative way? But in Italian, the expression was not so. I said, Ernesto, come mai questo silenzio oggi? Much more um, soft. But Bolas was furious. He said, Vincenzo, you are intruding inside this patient. And I said, but this is my bad English. I don't worry. You are alterating his unconscious work. And maybe in 10 minutes, he could say something that he is elaborating. So you have to stop and wait also all the session. And I then, as I told you, remember the famous Winnicott sentence, I am very afraid of the psychic change that I have impeded personally with, with, for my personal um, interest in interpreting. If I could be silent, the patient could arrive at that point in which I would bring him. And the joy of uh, seeing a patient which arrived by himself to that point is much more important than the interpretation, also a very inspired interpretation. So we are in front, um, how can I say, uh, in the area of Winnicott, Bolas, Janagulas, Masud Khan, of silence, of uh, waiting for something that happened in the deep of the patient. And Smadar, uh, can I make another observation? Of course. Uh, it is incredible that in 1942, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, Freud died in 39 and Melanie Klein wrote uh, uh, the paper on uh, on schizoid mechanism. In 1942, uh, Winnicott described the observation of infants in a sad situation. And by the way, it is the first time that the, the, the term set is used and it is Winnicott who introduced the term setting that now has become our instrument of work. And Winnicott said, every one of you know the story, that many things can be understood when the mother brings the boy or the child or new, newborn from the entrance to the, the desk, and you can observe the way in which the mother uh, embraces the, the child, if the child moves, or if the child is very mm, close to the mother. And I have put, says Winnicott, um, come si chiama bassa lingua? A spatula. A, a, a spatula who at the time was not as now uh, in, in, in wood, but was uh, 
in, in uh, uh, metal, you know? So it yes, was yes. brilliant, you know? Mm -hmm. And the child was attracted by the spatula according to his age. And he said, when he got that, uh, around six, eight months, the child was attracted by the spatula and he tried to um, grasp the spatula and he described the situation with the mother who is obsessive, stop the child, no, or the mother is uh, very aching to uh, let the child move and la leave the child put the spatula in his mouth. And Winnicott is incredible because he described the, the various phases in which, I will arrive to the point, don't worry, in which the child uh, begins to, um, uh, how can I say, begins to imagine what is the sensation of the spatula in his mouth. The mouth and the tongue become very, um, um, very uh, singrosa, uh, become, uh, I don't know, uh, become very um, gross uh, and the child put the spatula in his mouth and then again down. At a certain point, Winnico says that if, uh, it is more, very, very important, if the pediatrician, myself, Winnico, if the people who is observing the child are so disciplined of not intervening we can observe a very important thing. The child put the, the, the end toward the spatula, but stop his movement. In this moment, the child has the full um, conscience, the, the full, the full um, feeling that is, um, uh, how, how can I say it in English, uh, is uh, titular, can I say titular, of his desire. So he can decide. Mm. To, own, to own his desire. Or maybe? his own desire. And he can decide if put uh, keep the spatula or not. And if he does not keep the spatula, Winnicott calls it this uh, mm, the phase of uh, attesa, of waiting, mm. uh, of, of, of suspension. And uh, this uh, observation is completely transferred in the clinical work with a child, adult, a patient, and Masur Khan says uh, the period of hesitation, this is the, the real term that Winnicott used, is very important because the client believes that the hesitation is uh, um, an obstacle to the analysis, a resistance to the analysis, while they do not understand that the patient is struggling like that child inside himself to find a sense of what is happening inside himself. That's why Bolas told me, Vincenzo, you have destroyed the, the attempt of this child, of this patient, sorry, to produce something of untold, of never told, in his life. So this is very important because we are in the area of the untold, of the unsaid, and of the spontaneity of the gesture. You know that Winnicott uh, uh, wrote a lot of letter, very interesting. I would suggest you to read this letter, which uh, is entitled, Posthumus, The Spontaneous Gesture. 
in which he speaks of the spontaneity of, of, of the, uh, the patient gesture without, uh, because he wants to avoid the false self-organization. And this is a very difficult uh, um, explanation, I don't know, which is your experience to the student, because they cannot understand well what is the false self. They, because they believe that the false self is a, a sort of non-authentic self, but Winnicott says that the false self has also a very important uh, useful function because uh, defend the individual from the intrusion of the other. The false self becomes very dangerous when the individual lose the contact with the real self, the, the, the real authentic self. And we can say to be also critic uh, with Winnicott, that his choose of the world was not every time so beautiful. For example, false and uh, true self is not a good expression because false seems that uh, the patient is a sort of imposter and uh, true self means like uh, 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 money that is uh, not false. And you know that uh, Bolas, uh, without saying, unfortunately, substitute this uh, term with uh, idiom. The true self for Bolas is the idiom, mm. the, the real part of, of, of the individual. So mm. I think it is very important uh, to understand the, the dynamic between false and true self, in which way we want to uh, express it, and that uh, the true self is the core of the individual. And we need also add, stop me please, when it is too much, also add that uh, there is a part of the true self that he calls uh, the uncommunicado self, that uh, the analyst cannot uh, touch and perhaps uh, many times uh, neither the patient knows that he has an incommunica uncommunicado mm -hmm. self. So uh, it, it is like the, the dream. You cannot never interpret the dream completely and you can never understand completely the self of the patient. There is something that remains always obscure to the analyst and very frequently also to the patient. In many analyses, when the analysis is very deep, sometimes the unsaid comes out, comes up, and you discover things that uh, you could not believe. I would stop here because I am- yes. am I want to ask something, please. Hi. <laughs> Please, before this, tell me that I'm clear or not. <laughs> yes. I, I, before you speak, uh, Mayor, I, I, I want to offer uh, that uh, everybody who wants to, to share with us his uh, thoughts, maybe, uh, you know, questions, uh, can yes. do it uh, uh, or by putting something in the chat and we, we can uh, invite him either by just start speaking as male. No, just, uh, I, I, uh, May, just let me add something that uh, what I intuited with uh, uh, Peter St. Peter became a reality in the analysis with him. That's why I say that the counter transfer precede the transference because he was really a wolf, he was really aggressive and all the other thing that I cannot uh, say now. But in this sense, that uh, enactment that he made was very significant because he was the first son and the mother had the sister just nine or 10, 11, sorry, 
months after him. So the mother distracted his attention from him and devoted all her attention to the, the sister. And he felt always the second, even though he was the first. And in the <laughs> enactment of the session, he wanted to be the first. It is my hour, not the hour of the, pa of the patient that you are, uh, that is lying on the coach. That it is important that the enactment as a meaning, I don't know if I'm clear about this, but I discovered this after a lot of session, after a lot of analysis. Uh, please uh, make Thank you. Thank you, yes, Mayor. I have uh, some uh, thoughts on some questions, you know. First of all, I'm not sure I, I, I heard you uh, well. Did you mention two expressions? One is transference before transference, and the other is count on transference before transference. Mm. Are, are, are there differences between, uh, according to your opinion, between uh, these two kinds of uh, uh, things? And the second thing, uh, I thought, um, what is the difference between uh, this uh, way of being uh, uh, between this and our the, the the personality or the being of the analyst? You know, uh, the way you are. Uh, yes, uh, this is a very important question. I'm sorry that I had to mention myself, but I wrote gone it ago a paper entitled The Person of the Analyst, in which I um, underline how the person of the analyst and not the technique is the real important point of the um, outcome of an analysis. And uh, you know that there are a lot of study, is, uh, especially in the United States, that are related, that are um, called analyst, analysis and matching. And it is possible that uh, the analyst, uh, the analysis and matching is not good. Sometimes it's good, other times it's good, but it cannot avoid. What I want to say is, in my view, I, I do not uh, assume that every of you believe my conception. My view is that at the beginning is the analyst who organized the session with his impression, with his response to the first sentence of the analyst. The smartness of the analyst is to revolve the situation and make the, the transfer of the patient in first as first and keep in the background is counter transfer. So it would be a big error to remain attached to the first impression. The analyst has to elaborate his first impression and understand that what is important and the transitional area in which the analyst, the, the analysand can as Bola says, introduce his uh, uh, character, his personage to the analyst and let him make the analyst knowing his character. So I don't, don't, don't believe that counter transfer always is the center of the analysis, but at the beginning it is necessarily. You can not be in agreement, but I think this. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I can see in the chat that somebody has written a question, but it is in Hebrew. Eran uh, Gershon. Eran, uh, you want to talk? 
אתה פה? ערן גרשון, או ש... אפשר פשוט אולי לתרגם את זה. אפשר בהחלט, כן. אז רגע, דוד, אולי תעזור לי לתרגם. את רוצה שאני אנסה להגיד את זה באנגלית? כן, כן, בוא נראה. I wondered if פרופסור בונמיניו is talking about... the um, analyst sometimes um, put into the patient in a project, project into the patient uh, like uh, Kalanian said uh, in a way that parents uh, usually do for uh, with their children and um, or maybe a um, It leads the patient sometimes to respond uh, like in a rule responsiveness to the to the way the the analyst wants him to give in a not in a very not not with without uh, um, without knowing mm. this is a very very important question very deep and uh, it is at the center of the Mm, split between the Kleinian way of thinking and the Winnicottian way of thinking. Generally, the Kleinian believes, and I am not criticizing them because in their framework, it is coherent. They believe that it is the patient who projects into the analyst something wrong or something aggressive, or something else. This is also believed by Winnicott, but it is not the main point. For Winnicott, the, the function of the analyst is to be receptive. And even though the patient is projecting something, he has to elaborate this and understand why is projecting this into the patient, while the Kleinan analysts believe the, that is eight or other feelings. This is the main difference. Winnicott believes that even though the, analyst, the patient is projecting, there is a reason why. There is a mistake on the side of the analyst that has induced the, the patient to project this part into the analyst. The clients, I am not a critic with, the, with them. They have a different uh, um, frame of reference. They believe that is always the patient that is making projective identification toward the analyst. And if you see the classical interpretation is you make me feel that I am aggressive toward you, but the, the reality is that you are aggressive toward me. Winnicott would never say this, never, never, never. Mm. Only Winnicott would ask himself, why this patient now is aggressive with me? What I have done to induce his aggressiveness toward me? And if he is able to solve this problem, the situation changes. I don't know if I replied correctly to your very important question. Yes, I think so, I agree. Uh, my, I, I have a, a fixed point in my mind because uh, I follow many Kleinian seminar. I um, had admiration for many Kleiner analysts, even though in disagreement with them, but they are very, very precise in their way of interpreting. I am speaking mainly of adult analysts, not of child analysts, because, uh, you know, the case of Richard is uh, terrible, in my view, because Melanie Klein want to extirpate from uh, the mind of Richard 
what she believes is the unconscious fantasy of, uh, of Richard. And if you have read the um, biography of Richard, Richard say, yes, I remember that uh, very nice uh, old woman who, had, uh, who was fixed with the sex. And he always wanted to tell me that I was uh, interested in sex, no? For Winnicott, when the play of, of the child is uh, uh, imbued with sex, uh, sexuality, this means that the child has a conflict. The real play for Winnicott is a play which is not uh, imbued with sexuality. We, we, which is spontaneous. So for Winnicott, if you see a, 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 a sexual game a play in the child, you have to think that the child has a deep conflict inside. For Melanie Klein, is a, a feast, a, 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 is the core of, of the play. So there is a, com a completely different of playing. For many clients, playing is the equivalent of free association of the child, of the adult. For Winnicott, play is a spontaneous activity which is healing the soul, the south or soul of the child. So it's completely different. Yes. Okay, we, we have another comment or question uh, coming back back to the um, concept of counter transfer transference uh, Hadassah, uh, Hadassah Poet, Rotsalishol, you want to ask or shall I read it? I'm going to read it. Okay, okay. Yofi, Yofi. Um, first of all, thank you for the lecture and I wanted to ask you, Professor Baniminio, I'm not sure I understood uh, is it that sometimes when we, our counter-transference, our first counter-transference will suit the dynamics that we'll see afterwards, while other times it won't predict and suit the dynamics that we'll see afterwards? And what you're saying is that we have to be very careful to check, not to go on with our feelings, but to see when it suits and when it doesn't suit? like the girl that called you up and she had a very uh, tough uh, uh, voice. And then when she came in, she was like very gentle. And uh, the man who was very big and aggressive and by him it went on in the therapy also. Uh, if I had understood correctly, you are putting the finger in what Winnico says in eight in counter-transference because he divide four types of counter-transference. What he calls the normal counter-transference, that means uh, the normal attitude of the analyst toward the patient, love, mm, comprehension, uh, listening to what the patient says. Then he mentioned a second type of counter-transference in which the analyst has some negative feelings toward the patient, but he is able to elaborate his feelings <laughs> and understand the meaning. The third type of counter-transfer is what he calls the um, potoma, that means that the analyst has not uh, had not had full analysis or complete analysis, and there are uh, area that he does not understand. So he continue to interpret the same thing, but the patient wants to say another thing, and uh, at that point we need to suggest to go to a second branch of analysis to understand that scotoma. The fourth type of countertransference is what uh, is most, most important, is what we call 
objective countertransference, very difficult to understand. I have read it many, many times. Finally, we are, I understand it. And he says that has nothing to do this objective counter with the patient. It is not the projection of the patient inside the analyst, but is an inner feeling of the analyst toward the patient, against the patient, or love toward the patient. This counter transfer has to be put aside, Winnicott says, and put at disposal of the patient if it is the case, when the analysis proceeds at a certain point. Generally, it is a negative countertransference, and at that point, Winnicott says, you can decide if to explicitate this to the, to the analysis or not. It depends on the, the, the course of the analysis, but what is important is that he attribute to the analyst inner feelings, which are not the projection of the patient, that are of the analyst himself. I don't know if I reply to your question, if I understood it. Sorry, if no, not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> Thank you very much, very interesting. <laughs> yes. David, uh, you want to read your comment? Sorry? No, I'm asking, there is a comment from David Ketron. Okay, Actually, at can you create a lie? Well, I try to be somewhat facilitative and maybe explain the idea because I thought the audience might be losing some of it. So what I wrote is that actually you are referring to what might be termed pre-transference and pre-counter-transference fantasies, but you do oh, emphasize how important it is not easy. to let this come in the way of the natural evolving of the transference counter transference matrix later on during the analysis. I would agree with your uh, terminological uh, distinction, maybe there is a pre-counter transfer and pre-transference. And uh, maybe it would be better to call this pre-counter transference and the pre-transference. But uh, in order to be more um, uh, provocative, I used counter transfer which precede transfer. But you are right, it is pre counter transfer in the sense that uh, it is the first impression and then you you change this impression mm -hmm. and you have to change it otherwise you remain attached to the first impression quite so i rest my case va bene oh thank you very much <laughs> can i say that i have uh, found this uh, meeting very very rewarding for me I hope that uh, I convey to you something uh, of interesting. Yeah. I hope. And uh, I don't know if we have to go on again. Uh, yes, I, I, I think I, I want to thank you very much. Oh, uh, a lot of thoughts, a lot of uh, <laughs> concepts still to be um, uh, how to say it, uh, still have to think about them and uh, digest them. Uh, and I'm sure we will meet again, so we will have uh, much more opportunities to speak with you. Yes, and I promise that uh, as the book uh, is out, because I was uh, a little bit upset by Routledge, because mm. they left the book two months without touching it and it was complete. But uh, the person didn't care at all. When the book arrives, I will send you two copies for your library. 
Thank you very much. And we will buy it and read it with pleasure. So congratulations. You don't need to buy it. You, you, you can use the, the free copy that I will send to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, to use Madara to mail and also to the library. So four copies for you. Thank you so much. And uh, good night. Thank you very, very much for this wonderful event. And uh, I hope I was rewarded. I hope that I uh, gave you back some uh, interest in my discussion. Of course, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you to you for the invitation. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye and see now, you soon. I, I would not stop again. Sorry? No, I was very tense at the beginning. Now I wouldn't stop <laughs> <laughs> the, the discussion, but we share. Now, now we can start the discussion, I think. <laughs> yes, and yes. Lacan says, uh, when uh, uh, the analysis is uh, to about to finish, then uh, the analysis can start. No? This is right. This is the point. <laughs> yes. So thank, thank you, you so much, much, Vincenzo. Especially to Madar and Mayer and to you all, I see, uh, view, seeing your... Uh, Other participants. Yes, I, I recognize many people that I met in Tel Aviv. So yeah. have a nice uh, summer and let's keep in touch. Of and course. I and I really hope we can invite you again talk. in life, not by Zoom next time. Yeah, yes, in life it's much better. Of course. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Good evening to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.